So this is going to be the first episode of the Back to Square Quan podcast, where we will be talking a little bit about how me and myself, Chong and Kedrick got into lifting, um, why we decided to make lifting part of our weird and wacky careers, some of the goals of this podcast, and really, are we truly uh, related? So thanks for tuning in. Yep, it's going to be a great first uh, first. I refer it to first, even though it's episode zero, because I can't say it, I can't say z- the f- zero episode. But yeah, it's gonna be a first introduction, uh, introductory episode. Personally, I think it's like important for people. People don't usually listen to the introductory episode, but for those out there who are actually listening to this, thank you very much. I think it's good to have a little bit of a background on why we are doing certain things. So yeah, uh, really excited to see where this podcast go in the future. And thank you all for tuning in to episode zero. Yeah. So, you know, like Kedrick said, it is important to get a backstory and, you know, taking things back to square one. Um, so I guess um, Kedrick can take the lead on this. Um, how did you get into lifting? Like, well, I, I guess what was the main uh, reason as to you dabbling into this weird and wacky thing that we'd like to lift heavy things and put things down? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I guess I guess you can say it's quite weird, wacky to those who are uninitiated. It it is quite funny because for those of you out there who uh might not know, we both lift weights, and there are many form of lifting, different model modalities, or different like uh styles of lifting weight, right? Weightlifting, powerlifting bodybuilding, CrossFit, oh, CrossFit, resistance training. <laughs> yeah. And all of those kind. But like for Chung and I, we are both powerlifters. Uh, Chung is definitely uh, more accomplished than I am. I'm, I'm quite average. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about that. I mean, yeah, I think a lot of people look at me and say, oh, it's so much weight you lift. But you know, in the grand scheme of things, especially if you're listening and you're not a powerlifter or a strength sport enthusiast, um, if you kind of look at my numbers, it might be impressive, but to the um, to the community itself, I would probably say um, well, it's probably just about average, <laughs> if anything else. Yeah, yeah, it's all about perspective anyway. But I guess um, for myself, like I said, we are both powerlifters and we. it's quite funny because I think everybody kind of like start off lifting because they want to look good uh, to a certain extent. You know, I always say that most people that go into the gym say that, oh, I only live for health, right? And they care nothing about like aesthetics. Uh, I would say that it's quite likely that that, that that not everything they say would be re- in regards to that sentence is like true. I think everybody would have some form of vanity, right? I think vanity nowadays is given uh, a bad rep, but I guess it's more on the spectrum, right? How vain you are or like how much narcissism one can have. But I think that people who live, we, we do strive towards uh, certain improving the way we, we look, right? And I think that is f- fair to say for most people out there who started lifting weights. For myself, that was definitely a consideration, right? Even though that was not the primary consideration. My primary consideration was uh, in high school, I was always a mediocre athlete. Uh, I'm, not the, I'm not the best, right? I play multiple sports, but... Um, I've never always been like the star player. So in my final year of high school, I participated in volleyball. I I started picking that up only in my final year of high school, which means that this is my one shot to uh to play as well as I can, right? Hopefully, I get selected for state, so even I get more play time, right? Uh, so during the volleyball training, what I did was I wanted to find ways to jump higher. So I'm like 5'11", and that is pretty tall from uh, for someone from an, like an Asian country. And because of that, I play um, spiker, right? So the guy who jumps and spikes the ball. Um, the, um, the, the, when we, um, and probably Kedrick can relate to this um, haiku. Um, yeah, this. yeah, basically, Watch. yes. Uh, that's kind of like the um, the star everyone yeah. would always have the cameras on so continue yeah. continue if you yes will. yes I, I was a spiker but then again in the team everybody 
to be a volleyball player, you kind of like need to be kind of tall. So everybody was kind of tall. Uh, I was definitely not the star's spiker, right? One of them, my friend, he's taller than me, uh, definitely have more reach. The other one is just overall a better athlete. And I felt like I needed to be more competitive. So I looked up online and say, oh, how can I improve my athletic performance? How can I jump higher? That was the primary goal I had in mind, right? So I was like, cool, right? Let's try jump, jumping higher. And that's how I started lifting weights. Uh, contrary to most people's origin story, at least males who go into the gym and started doing bench press as their first exercise, uh, mine was squats, right? So yeah, that you can say like I started lifting, I started lifting by training my legs. And then second, and then after that, I started like taking like protein shake and being the Asian high school kid who is on a budget, I thought like, cool, if I'm really taking protein shake, let's just do some upper body as well. So the protein can go to my upper body and then I'll be jacked all around. So that was yes, my thought of process. Course. Of yeah. course, it has to go. It has to go to the upper body because who, who cares about legs anyway? It's all yep. about the upper body. Yeah. Yep. So that is essentially my so so called like origin story. What about what about you, Chung? What's your how do you get into this whole uh, lifting business? Oh man. Um. You know, I think a lot of people might be able to relate to this, and I think yeah, you know, I think first and foremost, and if you're listening to this, Mr. Bart Kwan, uh, founder of Barbara Brigade another Quan out there. If you're listening to this, join the podcast. But um, it's funny because my my origin story actually came from watching a lot of Bart's videos. And this was in a time of my life where I wasn't mentally in a very good place. And um, for those who don't know, I was born in Malaysia, but I moved out of Malaysia. And I was basically a student in Australia, um, Adelaide. And Truth be told, there isn't a huge Malaysian community there. Um, you know, it's predominantly, um, you know, for better or for worse terms, very Australian. <laughs> and I was probably one of the few international Asian kids. And so I started off, did, you know, just sitting in my room and I thought, oh, you know, going on YouTube, watching youtube as every asian student will and i stumbled upon bart's channel jk jk news i believe and and it sort of just god the, the the gods of youtube algorithm um pushed me to bart's fitness side of things and um, that's where i started to actually see like bart doing power thing i was like okay cool like this is you know people are actually lifting things for the sake of being strong and aesthetic seems to be the secondary thing. And I, I knew that because I was doing a nutrition degree, I know that a lot of the aesthetics portion does come down to nutrition. And I'm like, you know, I am doing a degree, but man, I just can't be fucked. But by the way, this podcast is probably has some vulgarity in it. Um, I just can't be fucked, like putting the discipline into it. And I thought, okay, screw it. I'm just going to lift as, as much as I can. So stepped into gym, uh, very similar to Kedrick. I think the first thing I ever did was leg press and um you know i saw the progression from like a day-to-day -day basis and i thought hey you know like this is something that i enjoy i enjoy like seeing me able to go in and putting 25 kilos on each side you know the next week i go in i was able to put more and more and more and more and i started experimenting with other exercises and then eventually it just became this thing and then um you know i really really enjoyed it sticked with it for a long long time and yeah competed in my first power meet and never really looked back ever since to be honest yeah yeah i guess i guess that's good i think as you were talking you know it kind of like brings me back high school was like 10 years ago for me and man makes me feel a bit old but i guess you oh, know kind yeah. of like looking looking at the lifting our lifting career 10 years is a long time i can't actually remember something that I've been doing consistently for 10 years that is within like the same field, right? Sure. Yeah, people might 100%. make, yeah, people might make fun of me all the time. Say, like, dude, you've been studying all your life. I'm like, dude, yeah, I know. Right. I'm like, I'm yeah, currently doing my PhD <laughs> since high school until now I'm still studying. Right. So uh, I, I don't know, you know, uh, maybe the lifting gods has certain plans for me, but 
but yeah, ten years, ten years is long, long, long time. And I guess for all those who are out there listening to this podcast, right? Most of you would probably not imagine yourself lifting for ten years, and I definitely didn't. So it's just interesting to kind of like. I, mean, I can back. I can definitely attest to that. Like you know, I, I I thought I would just be lifting for a year and um everything would have stopped, but there is something about going to the gym and putting weights on the bar every week and just trying your very best to not overshoot the RPE and putting just a little bit more on the bar to see if you would actually break. There's some merit to that. I think uh, chasing that, you know, that, that journey, as we always like to say, you know, enjoying the journey of lifting. I think that's one aspect of lifting that, you know, I think, and I can't speak for people who are in the forties and fifties, but I think for the people who are in their twenties to sort of thirties, maybe even 40, if you're, st- if you're new to strength training, it's always that little bit of, I guess, endorphin rush when you know that putting a little bit more weight on the bar and it just moves so much more easier. You're like, oh, actually I did get stronger. And I think that's probably one of the reasons why we keep doing what we're doing for the last decade. <laughs> It's it's quite crazy. Last week I had uh, I had an athlete sign up, right? So we'll probably talk a little bit about our careers after this. But I I am currently a coach for the strength guys, and I had an athlete sign up. He's the famous he, one, guys. Um, the strength guys, by the way, for those who don't know. Um. Uh. Yeah. I mean, people. In I guess in New Zealand, a lot of our friends do do say that. Oh, Kendrick Kwan, like the celebrity coach. I constantly push back against that that title <laughs> I, I i i do think amongst all the strength guys coaches i probably maintain quite a low profile but i just don't like spending so much time posting stuff on social media but that's for another conversation oh but yes i i i have i i signed a new um, athlete and he competes in the master's tree so for those that do not know the master's tree starts at 60 years old him. And we, we were just having a conversation and he said like, oh, I've been lifting for 35 years. I'm like, wow. His years lifting is more than yeah, the, well, years, I'm the years that we're alive, you're pretty much. So like, <laughs> if you think about it, that's, that, that is pretty insane, right? Talk about like progress, you know, talk about uh, constantly like uh, chasing like half, half a kilo, right? I say half a kilo because uh, our American listeners out there if any would probably be like oh cool one pound or whatever you know half a kilo one kilo on the bar however however small that 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 um that amount is right we we kind of like set that progression uh that mindset to progress you know and i think that from what i currently notice a lot of lifters right now they do burn out uh really early because they have this unrealistic uh progression they usually uh, anchor their current progression based on the progression they've made, right? There are people who are like genetically gifted. Uh, even for those who are not genetically gifted, the minute you start lifting weights, like you mentioned, Chong, when you went on the leg press, you started making progression really quick. But to it's crazy, say, yeah. yeah, it's quite crazy, right? It's a nice feeling. But to say that if I want that exact progression to happen two years, three years down the line, just like how when I started lifting, I think that, unrealistic expectation might actually kind of like cause people to be a little bit more disappointed. You know, people always say, if you don't want to be disappointed, don't have expectation. I don't uh, take that form of like extreme approach, but I do think that setting expectations for your lifting career is actually like pretty important. Yeah. A hundred percent. Right. Like, you know, we always talk about, I guess, you know, in a more generic term and, you know, it's a good segue into what we do as as coaches i think a lot of people will be on the either end of the spectrum right it's like one will say don't set any expectations and then you've got the other end of the spectrum which is like set the bar as high as you can you know shoot for the stars i think there's merit to both but you know it's always going to be this happy medium and you know you as a coach and our coach as well we, we definitely sort of see this where it's good to set a goal a hundred percent but I think focusing too much on the end goal can sometimes be detrimental, but it's also a good way to have like a goal to understand like, Hey, this is the direction that I want to move in. And, you know, like I might not get there in X amount of time, 
but this is that direction that I'm moving, whatever it might be, right? A 200 squat, you know, 500 kilo deadlift for all you care. Like that's a direction I want to go. And that's cool. Um, but I think as well as from our perspective, or at least my perspective, it's like just making sure that we are having that sense of direction, but understanding that day by day, session by session, week to week, we aren't just putting something unrealistic and setting ourselves up to fail so that eventually, hopefully, we can get to that whatever end goal that is. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, like you said, I think, you know, you mentioned like it's a good segue into what we do. And you've already mentioned just now that, yeah, so-called, I'm the so-called famous one. Why don't you <laughs> you tell us a little bit uh, about your, your career as a coach? You know, how did you decide to make this your full-time gig? You know, you, you mentioned that you your formal education is like in nutrition. So what, how do you kind of like transition into full-time coaching career and things yeah, like that? Yeah, and I think like this can be another full-blown episode as to what coaching really means. But, you know, I think for me, I think it all started when I was lifting in the gym. One of my mates asked me for advice. And usually with my track record, no one really asked for advice. Um especially when I was back in Malaysia, it, was a, an, it, was, it wasn't a thing to ask for advice from your peers. Let's, let's, just, let's just call it that way, right? Um, you probably have that same, uh, <laughs> same experience. So it was really cool. Like, you know, one day my mate was asking me, hey, you know, like I want some advice on lifting. And I'm like, well, I don't have a lot of information I can give. Like I, I am good with nutrition, but even myself back then, like, you know, and it's like the whole uh, nutrition coach, but don't actually have a nutrition bot kind of thing. And so I'm like, yep, I have yep. the theory, but I don't really put, know how to put them into practice. So what I said to him was, oh, just do this, this, this. And, you know, after that, I guess, you know, call it an epiphany or whatever it might be. There's this small revelation that, you know, I think I like helping people. You know, I might not be the best, whatever, athlete, fitness enthusiast out there whatever I want to call it but there is a different group of coaches who I think do coaching because they enjoy the art of coaching again mm. another podcast write this down somewhere I'll put this down in a note but um, that's probably why I steer down this route especially with the, the, the generation I'm, I, I'm working with, the population I'm working with. Side note, I do coach some powerlifters, but predominantly I actually do try my best to work with uh, millennials to help them understand like, look, you know, like your health is important. Your strength is important. And, you know, neglecting that as a millennial might not seem like a big thing right now because mm. your body is probably in its peak, in its prime. Yep. But if you're not going to take care of it right now, when you get to that 35, 45 year old mark, and that's actually one of the first few gyms that I work with. And I worked with like older people in general, like 50 and above. Um, yep. I see the problems and I, you know, and I always tell my clients and people that I chat with, it's like, look, um, you know, I'm a millennial. I understand the struggles, but I think that there is a lot of merit to actually keeping yourself healthy, fit, whatever you might call it. So that's, one of the reasons why I steered down this path, I think a lot of people tend to lose sight of why they need to, you know, stay healthy, lift weights, eat, eat well. And, you know, like we can sit here and argue every day, like, you know, I'm fine. Of course you'll be fine. But when, you know, when it comes to the crunch time that you're not fine, what happens then? And I think setting yourself up for success, like we kind of talked about is uh, a very, very important thing. And so that's the reasons as to one of the main reasons why I love doing what I do. Um, but back to you, Kedrick, and I'm keen to hear your thoughts. So for those who don't know Kedrick, like he said, he, he works for the Strength Guys, a very, very reputable uh, powerlifting coaching service team. But outside of that, and you might have also caught this, Kedrick's actually also doing his PhD. Um, and not a lot of people that I know personally would even go down the route of doing a PhD, let alone doing a PhD, which is in a very, very niche market, like health and fitness and even niche. It's like strength sports and water manipulation. So um, what, what made you decide to keep on studying and um, 
yeah, why why go down that route? I think a lot of people are interested to know. Yeah, yeah. I guess what we can say is that for uh, both of us, um, we 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 kind of uh, we have to apologize to parents for failing them because this isn't exactly the. <laughs> this is not something they wanted this to turn out. <laughs> Sorry, yep. mom and dad. <laughs> yep. Uh, we love you, mom and dad. But yeah, I guess you know it's you, you mentioned niche, and this is even more niche in the Asian community. I would not deny it that when I was in Malaysia, that you'd be hard pressed to find any kinesi- kinesiology, uh, nutrition, any exercise science, oh, ex-phys, and, right? And, and, when, and when you do, it's big bucks. You know, we're talking yeah. like inflated prices. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're hard pressed to find any uh, um, courses that, that that's being offered back home at least uh, 10 years ago. You know, I mean, now... Uh, the industry is slowly progressing, but still at a slower rate compared to other parts of the world. So being someone who has always been naturally curious, I was that annoying kid in school that always asked my teacher, why, 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 you know? And I think that has kind of like stuck with me even up till today. When I look at, a certain uh, a problem before me, you know, the question is like, why is this happening, right? Then if we understand the why, then perhaps we can find a solution around it. And there, there are a lot of unanswered questions that is, uh, that's out there, right? And a lot of misinformation. When there's misinformation, the question then falls back to why would this actually work? You know, why, for example, I don't know whether the debate still rages on, but why would low carb work better than a high carb for fat loss? Why? You know, we always have that that question. And for me, I wanted to answer that question. And like you said, people do gravitate towards you. Back in the days, I was known as the gym guy, you know, like the guy that goes to the gym all the time, right? You know, when, uh, and people do ask you questions. And when people ask me questions, naturally, I if I cannot provide an answer, I would look it up, you know, I would look it up try to find the correct answer and slowly bit by bit you look at science right sports science and you realize that hey you know people actually study this kind of stuff people actually look at ways we can isolate certain causes and their effects people actually look at how we can change or improve performance how can we improve uh what is the best way for muscle hypertrophy and what is the for example, my PhD is like, what I'm trying to answer is that what is the best way to manipulate your body weight in a short amount of time if you compete in a weight class restricted sport, primarily in uh, primarily in strength strength sports related, um, yeah, strength sport related and not so much on the combat sports side. So my that's what I'm trying to answer, right? Uh, what's the best way to do certain things, right? And then for most people, I think they stop at, cool, I have the answer. This is the best way. Most people don't ask, why is this the best? I would say that I would not be able to go, go to sleep if I don't know why it is so. So you could say that, I am driven largely by my curiosity and I do not discount the fact that the people that I've met along the way, the people that I've uh, encountered that has asked me questions, asked me to provide advice, have definitely steered me towards this path and probably that's, that's why I'm doing a PhD, right? And I also like yeah. to say that because I've already failed my parents once uh, <laughs> by going down this- At least uh, get at least get the doctor behind your name. Basically, right? At least become a doctor, you know? At Just least become a doctor. Yeah. Well the only, said. Yeah, the only time I'll deny myself being a doctor is when I'm in the flight and the flight attendant asks, do we have any doctors in here? Yeah, I'll just nah, like slowly, kinda, slowly hide uh, behind the chair. <laughs> as as <like>. you would. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I guess that, that essentially is- um, my, my, my uh, answer, you know, just driven by the my curious nature. And I guess in future episodes, when we talk about like 
uh, like philosophy related uh, topics, you can kind of like see that part of me shine. And a lot of time, uh, yeah, a lot of times it's just like me trying to like think and think out loud. So if you find that, if anyone listening here find that I'm just blabbering a whole bunch of stuff, like I think that my mind is quite chaotic and sometimes I just have uh, a diary of words. So forgive me. You know, oh. they, 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 do, they do definitely say a chaotic mind is a beautiful mind in, in, in many cases. And I think um, a lot of people can definitely relate to that. You know, we, we obviously speak to a lot of people in our day-to-day -day life. And you know, at least for me, I speak to a lot of people from different, different occupations, nurses, uh, doctors, college students, you know, people who work as chefs and everyone has a very, very busy mind. And I think there is a lot of merit to talk about these things, which is a good segue into why are we creating this podcast? What are some of the goals of, of this podcast? And I think if you haven't already gotten already with the play of names, I think the goal here is really sort of, as, as Kedrick said, there's always us trying to find out reasons and an answer to certain things. And I think as questions, methodology, as science and philosophy evolves for better or for worse, sometimes I think there is a lot of merit to going back to square one and just looking at how these things came to be, right? Like the Big Bang, for example, like how how something came to be or like how how was 5x5 five five created? You know, like why is 5x5 five five such a widely used program, not just in the strength community, but basically anything barbell related. And so many programs sort of just branched out from something as simple as, you know, the 5x5. Five and I think one of the goals for the podcast is to really look into some of, you know, coming back to square one, like I said, and looking at these main topics to really see what we can learn from just going back to its roots and looking at where things are at right now and potentially answering some of those questions as to how we went from point A to point B and potentially bridging the gap. So that's definitely one of the goals. Um, what do you think, Hedrick? Yeah, I definitely think that, you know, uh, going back to, like say, square one, trying to understand the history is important, you know. I, there's this famous quote out there by, like, Santayana who says that those who do not remember the past are condemned to re repeat it. And I think that there, that there yes. is a lot of merit to learning history. Um, you know, a lot of things that are happening around uh, the world today, people, uh, I, I do see a lot of people making uh uh, making claims at least you know without proper like backing and looking at like history and stuff like that so I think you know if you revisit a lot of the events I'm not trying to say you know how they say that uh, that there is nothing new under the sun you know most of the time you just go through different cycles of, of stuff mm. and different forms and I definitely think that once we can have a platform to talk about things like that and it's not just uh, we are not here to tell people that we are the authority on this particular no, topic definitely I think, not <laughs> right right i i i don't i i am not uh that bold to make such a claim and i think that for you and i we would like to like provide a platform you know for discussions as well i am pretty sure that even between you and i despite our uh similar like surnames we we do disagree about things and i think it's natural i think it's healthy for people to disagree about things yes. it's healthy yes. for people to discuss about their disagreements because it is true uh that true discussions right uh through proper discourse uh society as a whole can improve and work on certain uh improvements right one idea might be lacking in some aspect and that the, the counter idea might be lacking in another aspect, but if you can merge and synthesize uh, those ideas, perhaps we can come up with something better. And in the end, that is what the platform is for. You know, like you said, we go, even if we look at like philosophy essentially is like, I mean, the word philosophy basically means like the, the love of wisdom, you know, uh, looking at how, thought in general process over uh, progress over time. And I think that's for training as well. You know, like you mentioned 100%. five by five. That's five by five by five. I think uh, if any of you here who has, who have been lifting for at least more than five years, you would probably have done a five times five training at program. At some for, point. 
even yes, and- in, in a specific mesocycle of your entire prep or whatever at yeah. some point there will be a five by five yeah <laughs> i mean we- i have five by five now actually come to think of it yeah, we've we've definitely progressed from like cool five times five is the gold standard towards like right right now you know based on the literature out there you know does periodization we could probably just go we won't go too much to it because you can like say it can be a whole podcast episode 100%. but like does periodization for like strength gains you know even matter as much you know but we and the way the training process has gradually evolved. Uh, I do think that people would actually benefit by looking at, cool, this is where a lot of people have started, right? This is square one for them. How did they progress? You know, I also hope that it allows people to kind of think about where they came from. I honestly feel like today, right, on Instagram, uh, uh, Bryce Lewis kind of like posted a post, right? I mean, based on what I'm saying, people might be able to guess when we oh, recorded yes. this. By the way, but, Bryce, um, we would love you to have the pod- on be on the podcast as well if you're somehow yeah. listening to this. Yeah, Bryce Lewis like uh, posted a post where he was in the gym, right? For the first time. Actually, funny story, like Bryce and I uh, started lifting because of volleyball, right? Fun fact out there, we True. Bryce and I True. met at Wolves and we confirmed that. But Bryce was, he said he was in the gym, right? For those that do not know, Bryce is the current IPF 105 uh, 105 kilo champion and he was in the gym he's squat squatting with the squat pad while doing squats using uh like those velcro belts and using his volleyball shoes right and he said that this was me like 10 years ago uh clearly you see a difference between bryce and i because 10 years ago i was probably like that but i'm not a world champion now he is uh, yeah <laughs> slight difference there sorry parents <laughs> yeah but if you, if you if you look if you look back at where he came from he realized that uh that, that is where it came from. No doubt strong, but not as strong as he is now. And I guess when we talk about things going back to square one, I hope it helped people realize that everybody starts somewhere. And Everyone starts think, somewhere. Yes. Exactly. I think that would help people create a mentality as well to be a little bit more uh, charitable for people who are just starting out. You know, it's very easy for someone who has been in the gym for 15 years to go into the gym, see a guy who most probably has this is his one week free trial for at the gym doing some ridiculous exercise. And then we just like look at it, that person and just like, Oh, think in our head. Oh my gosh, this guy is weird. Why is he trying to kill himself? You know, he should just stay at home, you know, like that kind of stuff. It is really to reach the conclusion. But if you look back at ourselves, like where did we start from? I'm pretty sure I was doing some absolutely ridiculous stuff. Oh, and yeah. I, I, I had people that time stare at me and probably had like all kind of like weird thoughts about me uh, in their head, you know, but yeah, I guess, that that is the goal right uh just yeah. provide a platform for discussion uh looking at where we came from seeing how that matters to us and essentially helping people maybe gain one or two tips that they can potentially use in their gym training. and in life hopefully yeah <laughs> yep, essentially essentially a hundred percent so i guess before we do end this episode i think a lot of us myself included will be very curious to know are we related? Uh, it's a it's a tough question. Like we so like you said, I mentioned just now, like we have similar surnames, but I do think that for all those that those of you out there who still uh, has haven't catched on, Chung and I we are from originally from Malaysia, right? Ironically, so, we are from Malaysia and the same town. Yep, and we have similar set, we have like some mutual friends, even though like Chung is Chung is younger than myself, but so we are Malaysians, but our grandparents, I would presume your grandparents as well as mine, they are from China, right? Because so highly possible, yes. <laughs> yeah. So like uh our like ethnic background is like uh Chinese, right? So that that I mean there are many different like Chinese the Chinese people scattered all around the world, but I would say that we we are from China and I do think that the way we write our Chinese characters. Uh, the our surname or mm. is different. Yeah, so, I would think so. Yeah, so I think the first question I can ask you is, do you know what dialect? Uh, your your grandparents speak. So I think they mostly speak Cantonese. So right. So if they are from Cantonese, they're probably from like maybe like South the, China. Yeah. So I'm. Yeah. yeah. I'm my grandparents are Hakka so that that probably tells that we are most probably not related well, it's probably unrelated yeah high, high uh, possibility but 
the world is yeah. a weird place and you know as as some would like to um some would always would like to claim or say we all come from one single origin so god knows at some point yep. potentially um we might be related yep so yeah i mean we there's always the 23 and me ancestry test that is a little bit more a little bit uh, expensive for me to take at this current moment so if anybody <laughs> is out there and actually is actually uh curious to find out if chung and i are related you can send us a free kit of 23 and, and we me. will we and will definitely do that for you as as our private only fans content i mean um patreon <laughs> yep 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 and on that note um i guess we'll end the episode there so for those who did stay tuned all the way to the end thanks for listening and if you do like the podcast or at least this episode let us know what other type of uh, things that you would like to see any specific topics you would like us to cover any guests who you'd like to come on the podcast as well and potentially talk about what we would like to you know have a yarn bringing things back to square one and um, that'll be all from us today yep and i guess like what most post- podcasters do they say give us a five star rating subscribe whether on your itunes or on spotify oh, so yes. i listen i listen to a lot of podcasts so i think that's how they usually end it so don't forget to give us a five star rating subscribe to itunes or spotify or whatever you're listening on and thank you very much like on youtube if you want to watch the raw video as well but that will be all and yep thank you for listening likewise